Good afternoon. I hate to interrupt your fellowship, but it is time to move forward with our meeting. Uh, my name is Sarah Buck, and I am the president of the Rotary Club of Chicago. I would like to welcome you to the 5,713th meeting of the Rotary Club of Chicago. And Walt, Walt, please come on up here for the thoughts of the day. I hope everybody can hear me. Um, I don't know how many of you realize that. Oh, sorry. Okay. It was my stomach. I know. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know how many of you know that we basically do a lot of work with the Better Business Bureau. And Tom Johnson, who is the Vice President of Public Relations and on the Board of Relations of the Better Business Bureau, uh, invites a number of Rotarians to serve as judges for the Better Business Bureau Torch Award for Business Ethics, which falls right in line with our four-way test. And he had sent an email out saying, Thanks for your help with Torch nominations. Please let any leaders from Rotary know they are invited to light the night. Be our guest and join us for free networking event at the incredible 160,000 square foot 2112 incubator, the largest business incubator in the United States, dedication to music, film, and entertainment industry on Thursday night, September 19th, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. Now, the reason I'm mentioning it today is because I'll forward this on to the office and they'll be able to contact everybody. There is a light tonight event just to celebrate and honor everyone engaged as nominees, nominators, promotional partners, past winners, and judges of court and some of Chicago's great business leaders. Behind the scene tours, enjoy some light bites and drinks, and just have a great time. The event is, my kind of money, free. But make sure to RSVP soon since space is limited. Can't wait to see you there. There's plenty of free parking. It's, it's right near Foster and, and Cicero Avenue in Chicago. So help us light the night. I will forward this on to the office and they will forward this on to you. Um, I look forward to seeing more Rotarians because one of the criteria that the Better Business Bureau uses is community service. And there's nothing more than we can provide the Better Business Bureau than community service. And on the other hand, there's nothing more than they can provide to us than new members. So thank you very much. Thank you, Walt. Always a pleasure to share the microphone with you. Before we start with our speaker for today, just a few announcements. So first of all, we have our member fun fact for today. So those of you who perhaps have not been at a meeting recently, uh, I started these member fun facts. So this week, it's fortunate that she's actually here today. Um, this is not a very fortunate story, I have to say. Um, Sir Kirsten Stevens uh, and her husband moved to the Bahamas right after their wedding and lived there for 18 years. The reason for their move was to get out of the heavy crime of South Florida. On her husband's first day off in a month, they went to the casino on Paradise Island to watch the famous cabaret show. That night, armed with machine guns, a group of thugs held up the casino and robbed the hotel and guests 
of a half a million dollars in cash and jewelry. Pearson and her husband jumped on the stage and hid behind the curtains with the cabaret dancers. The robbers got away with their stash on jet skis, but some were later apprehended. I don't know how much fun that is, like a fun fact. It sounds like a plot to the, one of the books I read, but thank you for sharing, and we're glad you're okay. <laughs> So we haven't met in two weeks, I think. So we'll see if uh, anybody remembers from the last meeting's uh, fun fact. Who is a singer-songwriter and had a rock band that was reviewed in the U.S. and Europe and featured on PBS, the Chicago Sun-Times, MTV Asia, and Rolling Stone India? Alita. That is correct, Tom Silva. Okay, so a couple of opportunities are coming up. Are we ready? So the next opportunity for us to join is the 46th anniversary of Peace Day, which is Monday, September 23rd at 11.30 in Daly Plaza. This is a free event and includes one minute of silence for world peace, as well as cultural performances of, of music and dance. So it brings together communities and culture as a step toward building peace. So if you're interested in participating with that, you can go to our Rotary One calendar, or you can uh, also email me the, um, as she is helping to organize that. So this is brand new. This is hot off the presses. This is an opportunity for us to attend a fashion show called the Glamour Gala. So this is a dinner, a fashion show, and dancing at the Glamour Gala 2024. This picture is from last year when uh, myself and Alita and Katie, our speaker today, modeled some dresses for Natalie. The Glamour Gala is part of the International House of Fashion, which was funded in part from the Community Service Committee several years ago. And what this event is, is the students who took part in Natalie's um, project, the International House of Fashion, it's their designs. So Natalie is a Rotarian uh, in this club. Like I said, the Community Service Committee helps fund this project in part. And she asked me to model in it, which is super exciting. So it all just comes full circle. Um, so this is a black tie event on September 28th. The tickets are $150 and it is, there's only 10 spots. Actually, I should say there's only eight spots because Gunnar and I are going. So there's only eight spots. So if you're interested, Alita and Eric, see, they're already signing up. So there's only 10 spots total and now they're already leaving. So make sure that you, if you're interested in attending, it'll be a great event and make sure you sign up. Um, and then lastly, before I introduce Katie, I just wanna thank um, those who attended our Beauty Bar Music Trivia event yesterday. I'd like to thank Gunnar for taking all of those great pictures. And Nancy, our president elect, her team is the one that won the trivia event. Um, so it was a really nice uh, afternoon of a couple of hours. All right. So it is time for me to introduce Katie, who is our speaker today, but she is also a member of our club and the co-chair of the International Service Committee. As the executive director of Project Cure Chicago, Katie is working to make Project Cure a household name in the Midwest. Katie is passionate about empowering and equipping communities specifically women, with the tools needed to build a healthier community and ultimately a healthier world. Prior to joining Project Cure Chicago, Katie spent 20 years as a leader in both the nonprofit development and finance arenas, serving as development manager for various organizations and vice president market manager for Commerce Bank, with her last role being with Rush, Rush University Hospital in Major Gifts. Graduated with honors from Illinois Wesleyan with a Bachelor of Arts of International Studies Diplomatic Relations. During non-work hours, Katie spends her time with her two sons, supporting them, it says, in their thousands upon thousands of extracurricular activities. So thank you for being able to do everything else that you do. So let me pull your slides up here and we will welcome Katie.
Okay, thank you. So you just get it with the space bar. The space bar, I'll yeah. skip it. Okay. Okay. Well, hello, everyone. It's kind of fun to be on this side of the meeting. <laughs> but I am so delighted today to be able to introduce the work of the organization that I have the privilege to serve, Project Cure. Project Cure is actually the world's largest distributor of donated medical equipment and supplies throughout the world to under resourced countries. We serve over 138 countries. I have a video, but I've been told that the sound may be a little bit low, so. Do I have to hit a button? We're going to skip the video. That's okay. We'll skip over the video. So we at Project Here believe that where you live should not determine if you live. <clears throat> For over 35 years, Project Here has been delivering health and hope to the world by providing donated medical supplies to, and services to countries facing severe health care shortages. Each week, our organization delivers an average of four to five 40-foot cargo containers containing anywhere between $350,000 to $500,000 worth of medical equipment and supplies to under-resourced countries across the world. Each week, hundreds of volunteers join us in our seven warehouses, helping to sort and prepare medical supplies for upcoming shipments, and every day someone's life has changed. So Project Cure has been around for 36 years. This is actually, and we were started in a garage, as all great things typically are. This is a picture of our founder, Dr. James Jackson. Dr. Jackson was an international economist who was doing work in South America saw the vast disparity between healthcare there and here and decided to do something about it. So he started in his garage. And this is what we look like now. We have seven different 50,000 square foot warehouses nationwide where we collect and sort medical equipment and supplies that we ship. Um, this is our footprint domestically. So we have seven distribution centers across the United States located in Colorado, Texas, Tennessee, Illinois, Pennsylvania, Arizona, and Missouri. And this is a heat map. Everywhere that you see that's in red is a country that we've delivered at least one 40-foot container of aid to. So a tale of two emergency rooms. Why do we do the work that we do? So on the bottom left, you'll see probably a familiar looking emergency room. That's what an emergency room looks like here. On the top right corner, that's an example of an emergency room um, that needs our help. So how do we start our process? Well, one thing I'm incredibly proud of and one thing that sets us apart from other international relief organizations is we don't go anywhere we're not invited. We wait for a country, a hospital or clinic system to reach out and request help. The next step in the process is a, an assessment and an assessment is critical. Um, because it really helps us align what we have with what's going to truly strengthen and sustain that hospital. Um, so we have one of our assessors here today at my table up front. Pass. So our assessors um, fully evaluate the hospital so we can align um, the right equipment with what they have the capacity to, to, to use. Um, so for example, you wouldn't send a cardiac surgeon or orthopedic surgery supplies. It might be great stuff, but it's not really going to help. So we make sure that everything that we ship on the container on down to the last box of gloves is going to be of value to the hospital or clinic system. So just some numbers, 23 to 24 to date. We've sent 132 shipments to 37 countries valued at $45 million. We have clocked 112,000 volunteer hours. Um, we've completed 50 assessment trips to 273 facilities. 28 countries and we have 19 more in the queue and then um, we work quite a bit in disaster relief space um, so just since the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine we've sent 150 shipments valued at 37 million dollars and then we have an additional 30 to 40 continued containers that are um, anticipated in the 2024 fiscal year and then we're continuing to ship disaster relief shipments to Mexico Turkey Syria and the Middle East I think one thing that's truly exceptional about our organization is we do all of that with 33 paid staff. So you're looking at half of the paid staff in Chicago. Um, the rest of the work is done by our army of volunteers who are wonderful. We have 30,000 volunteers nationally. Um, but what that, what that contributes to is less than 2 to 3% of our overall operating budget as an organization is overhead. So 
what that means is that 97 and 98 cents on every dollar goes to serve the people in the countries that we work in. We have several programs. So our major program is the Garden Container Program. Um, that's far and away uh, the biggest way that we deliver aid into different countries. Um, but we also do clinics programs and college programs. Um, we have kits, cure kits. So cure kits are like suitcase sized bags that are filled with, um, it's essentially like an ambulance in a bag. It contains about $2,500 worth of uh, medical equipment and supplies that anyone can pick up from a warehouse. So if you're traveling internationally, you can deliver that straight to the hospital or clinic system. And we also do kits for kids. So kits for kids are those little backpacks that you see in that picture right there. Um, and it's really what's in my medicine cabinet in the bag. As a mom of two boys, I use the things in that bag daily, and they're things that I can pick up from CVS, but the people um, in the countries that we serve can't. And so we um, often align these bags with some of the cargo containers. So our partnership with Rotary has been integral to our success. Um, since our founding, we have received over 270 grants from more than 100 different well -known clubs. That totals nearly $2.1 million to support our mission to identify, solicit, collect, sort, and deliver medical supplies and services according to the imperative needs of the world. With Rotary funding, Project Here has provided more than $20 million worth of donated medical supplies to more than 30 countries across six continents. We truly cannot do what we do without the support of Rotary. And then I did a fun little Google search. So this is a Google search um, that shows you the deep and abiding partnership we formed, the number of people, clubs, and communities we've collectively impacted. And then I also wanted to highlight a current global grant that Rotary One has, um, where we are sending two shipments, so two 40-foot containers, that contain about a million dollars worth of aid to Sierra Leone. Um, to Press Hospital. And in addition, when we did the assessment for this hospital in Sierra Leone, an infant passed away due to lack of resources and also lack of knowledge of how to care, how to care for the infants. And so we're also, with this grant, aligning a cure um, college program where we're going to provide infant CPR dolls, CPR, and um, early infant care training to the staff of this hospital. And then I always like to share my why. I think that's really important. So this is my why, why I do the work that I do every day with such passion. Um, this is my son, Jack, who just left for college, which is very sad. But this is my son, Jack. When Jack was born, um, it, my pregnancy was extremely high risk with Jack. He had a heart condition. Um, but now you see, that's my giant Jack towering over me on the right. Um, but the reality is if Jack was born in any of the countries that we work in, either he or I or both of us might not be here. And I truly believe that every mother across the world deserves to have their son and see their son grow up. Perfect. Well, now um, I'll take questions. Go. Okay. Okay. Okay, so any questions in the room? Sure, that's a great question. So the question was, when we talk about a cargo shipment, is that a shipment to one facility or is it to multiple facilities? And the answer is both. Um, so a shipment, so for some of the clinics that we work in, like more rural clinics, they couldn't support a 40-foot container, right? And so when we do the assessment, we can assess up to 10 facilities at a time, depending on where they're located regionally. And so um, a container can be split between multiple clinics. And what we do is we just mark the supplies that are intended for specific hospital or clinic. But yes, they can be split. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. So the question, sorry, I got very excited about that question. It's a great question. Um, the question was, 
Brad, don't leave this room. I'll find you afterwards. The question was, do we accept light, lightly used medical equipment? Absolutely, 100%. It breaks my heart to know that major hospital systems, device companies, when they're done with a piece of equipment or it's you know upgraded, it just goes mm -hmm. in the garbage. And this is like lifeline to to some of our projects. So yes, we absolutely accept lightly used medical equipment. Um, and then also all of our everything that we put on a container has been inspected no less than three times by a trained volunteer. We also have bio, we have retired biomedical technicians, fabulous people that come and work with us five days a week to test everything that comes into our facility to ensure that we're sending quality things. But yes, and let me know what you have and I will arrange a time to pick it up. And if anyone else has lately used medical equipment, I would love to pick it up from you. Any other questions? Yeah. 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 Sure. No, that's a great question. So the question was, what are our expansion plans? Um, so as an organization, um, we just did a deep dive into where um, would be the next place for us to open a warehouse. Um, and it's been determined through studies that, that Dallas would be a good location for us. We have a location in Houston, but it seems to be a hub for major hospital networks. Um, and, and then an expansion as far as like um, covering under-resourced countries. We're now, um, in addition to expanding disaster relief, because that seems to be, I mean, when it happens, we need to get stuff out. So we're starting to stage disaster relief containers at all seven different warehouses so that when something happens, we are poised to, to ship aid as soon as possible. Um, but then also, um, we recently did a project where we're regionally focusing Instead of doing like one hospital system or, or one clinic system, we're looking at entire regions. Like if we focus on um, Aromia, Ethiopia is, is the region that we started focusing on. And just by connecting with the diaspora community, we're making huge, huge strides in, in impacting the healthcare system in that region. Of course. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, great question. The question was, um, what type of disasters? So are we focused on hurricane relief or um, all, any and all? So anywhere um, that there's de death or dying um, or sick people in need, we go. And so like you, when there's conflict, so Ukraine, we're working in the Middle East as well, but um, Turkey and Syria, when the earthquake struck, we were ready to ship aid out. So any, any type of disaster where the medical system would need to be um, bolstered a bit, we're, we are ready to help. Yes. Oh, the question. Sorry, I get excited when people are offering me equipment because I'm working on so many. Well, in addition to being the executive director and the executive leadership and like running all of uh, the fundraising for the Chicago market, I also have the privilege of being a project partner. So when these when people from different countries reach out and say I have a hospital and clinic system in need, I get to help start to finish. Um, help them achieve their goal of receiving a container. And so the question was, um, do we receive dental equipment? Absolutely, yes. Betsy. Yes, um, great question. So Betsy's question was, how are we able to overcome barriers um, of getting things into different countries? Um, and then, what was the last part of your question, Betsy? How do people end up implementing it? Oh, right, right, right. Of get, getting it in. Yes, yeah, so, so barriers with customs. Um, our, so our international headquarters is home of logistic, absolute scientific geniuses. So they know the nuances between what can get into Guatemala and what can get into Nigeria. They know um, what expire dates they'll accept. And then we also like, well, because a shipment can sometimes take like three to five months to get there because they're going overseas. They know what needs to be in that container to clear customs, all those nuances. Um, and then um, we also work, one big part of the assessment is meeting with um, local government. Um, and so for example, I'm working on a project currently to Kenya 
Kenya has a restriction where it can't be, um, it, you have to have all this manufacturer paperwork, which our stuff is donated. It might be perfectly good, it might be new, but we don't have, it's like buying a used car, right? Like, it could be great, but we don't have all that paperwork. So I've been working with the Ministry of Health, the ambassador to Kenya, it's pretty exciting because we are just like on the precipice of getting this approved where we're going to be able to ship things into Kenya, which we haven't been able to do since 2019. Um, so lots of different ways. The logistics team really knows the nuances of all the different countries that we work in. And then also executive leadership will work with governments to um, mitigate that so we can get the aid in because the requests, we've had 250 requests from Kenya just since 2019, since they started that legislation. So. Of medication? That's a great question. The question was, do we accept, um, like, pharmaceuticals or slightly expired pharmaceuticals we actually that's a fantastic question we actually don't ship pharmaceuticals so that's one thing that we cannot ship because of that customs piece um, and also liquids we don't ship liquids because the cargo containers are not climate controlled so we don't want to have anything explode while it's en route yes sure Yeah. So the first, yeah, absolutely. Um, so the first question was um, the assessments, the assessment piece of it. How long does it take? Um, and the question, the answer is, it depends how many facilities we're observing. Um, so for the Kenya project that I referenced, we were um, assessing ten hospitals. So that project took about two weeks for an assessor to do. Um, if it's a small hospital or clinic system, it can take a day, two days. Um, it just depends on the size and then also the number of departments that we're assessing. Does that answer your question? Well, you know, the, the question really was how long it takes to actually do the physical assessment. It's how long it you know, waiting to be assessed. Oh, waiting to be assessed. So that's a great question too. So the in the queue, because there's so many projects that are, are waiting to be assessed, it typically takes I, six weeks is the soonest. Um, so it typically takes like one to three months, um, depending. And the second question yes, and on the train. So the second question was regarding the training. And so we do cure clinics trips um, where we'll dispatch doctors to, depending on the request. Um, clinics trips and college trips have to follow a container. No, we don't, every container doesn't get a clinics or college trip, but um, especially if they're um, launching a new department like obstetrics, we will gather doctors from here that are ob guiding and send those doctors to help work in that uh, new department. And then the college trips, like, like I referenced with the grant that Rotary One is working on, um, that's, those are specific to uh, helping mothers Survive Helping Babies Survive program. So we have um, highly rated programs where we dispatch people to train. It's like a train the trainer thing. Um, so like with this grant, we're gonna leave those Lara dolls, like the CPR dolls, which are very expensive, surprisingly, um, where we'll leave, leave all of the training materials so that they continue to train the trainer. Okay, so that is our time. Let's give our speaker so uh, to thank you for speaking to us, you are now the proud owner of one of our reusable grocery bags, the tote bag with our logo on it. Um, so thank you very much for sharing your experience and your knowledge with us. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you very much for being here. Okay, so up next is the point in time where we introduce our visitors. And there's a lot of you today, so I'm gonna need you to come up 
And we'll start with the international Rotarians and then any uh, domestic Rotarians, you'll have to come up and form a line. You have to speak right into the microphone so that our uh, Zoom people can hear you. So I know we've got people who've come from a really long way. So my international Rotarians, if you'd like to come up, um, and then my behind them, the domestic Rotarians, if we have any in the room. Do we have any domestic visiting Rotarians? Just international. Okay, and then after that, the guests of Rotary. So I know Wes and Betsy might have a few guests. Um, so just kind of form a line, and for time's sake, you get about one to two minutes to just tell us where you're from, and um, literally one to two minutes about your club. Okay, so we'll start up here, and then we'll just keep cycling through. Okay, come on up. Uh, thanks very much. Yes, we're, uh, I'm Doug and my wife hey. Anne Brown. From uh, We're from a Rotary Club of Gunnedah West, which is um, in northwestern New South Wales in Australia. Um, and we have come over here. We've been here about a couple of weeks now. And we just wanted, we felt like we would like to come to the uh, uh, a Rotary Club meeting of the first Rotary Club that was ever formed. Um, so we thought that was, since we were in Chicago, I looked it up and there was a meeting on with us, right, we're coming. So here we are. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, thank you very much. Mm. Hello, everybody. My name is Ruslan Basut and I'm originally from Ukraine, but since the war started, I uh, moved to the UK and uh, since that time, I am a Rotary member of Solihull, Rotary Solihull, Birmingham. Uh, I participate also very actively in our national uh, level projects. Uh, in particular, we provide uh, rehabilitation equipment to uh, the Children Rehabilitation Center in Ukraine and also provide some um, mental health support to the parents of children with disabilities in Ukraine. Thank you for the invitation. I'm happy to be here today. Hello, everyone. My name is Bernice Ofori, and I am with my family medicine. Um, I work as a clinical data manager, and my work primarily looks at prosecution disparities. So I see a lot of email communications about Project Cure. And that is what actually drew my interest. And I was speaking to Kay earlier about the work that she and Northwestern do together. And um, we also, I'm originally from Ghana. So we also spoke about how some of her shipments, actually, she does have a shipment right now that is en route to Ghana. So I'm very happy to be here. And I look forward to being a member and learning all there is to know about what we want. So very nice to meet you all. My name is Eva Rawundu. It's a pleasure to be here with all of you. So I have an experience of 30 years of IT. I uh, moved to Chicago uh, eight years ago. Uh, always work in uh, IT solutions. Now I'm working in the cybersecurity. Don't worry, <laughs> you are safe. Uh, but uh, it's an honor to be here. And thank you for this super well uh, welcome. So thank you. Hi, all. I'm Alexia Jackson. I'm a financial advisor at Merrill on the Burt Group. Um, I live downtown Chicago and I love our community, so getting involved was something that intrigued me. And so I heard about Rotary Club and how much you do for the community. So thank you and want to come see for myself all the great things that you guys are doing. Thank you. Thank you for being here. <laughs> Thank you for a delightful welcome and a wonderful learning experience. My name is Karen Maddock and I come all the way from Northfield. So, <laughs> but we have Peter, Father Peter Wallace Simbi who is from Uganda and my husband Alain who is a Frenchman and then another Wisconsinite. So we came because we have been working recently for the past several years in improving a village in Uganda, Kyojumani. Did I say that okay? and help the school that was mud brick, mud brick walls, dirt floors, no electricity, no water. We've dug wells, we've helped build new schools, we're improving life for the children there. 
and the clinic is almost finished being built, but there's nothing except a lot of hope. So thank you, Betsy and Wes, for inviting us to this wonderful learning experience because we think that we could fit very well together in the central Uganda. Thank you. Hello, I'm Babs Waldman, and I came from Evanston. Um, uh, I am medical director of Community Health, which is a free clinic here in Chicago, and I do global health work in uh, Dominican Republic and Haiti. And most importantly, I'm on the ambassador board of Project Cure, and um, I'm an assessor, as Katie referenced. I've done, I, th I think, around 15 or so assessments. It's a privilege and quite a learning experience, and it is quite impressive what Project Cure does. I've dealt with other organizations that do similar work, and um, the quality and, and the investment in the, the assessment piece is critical, and nobody else does it. Um, so, uh, thank you. Oh, Marga, you'll have to come up to the microphone, otherwise the people on Zoom won't hear you. Some of you may remember that Babs was a member of our club several years ago, and with Protocure, we sent five containers to Haiti. So, that was it. <laughs> Okay, so thank you to all of our guests for being here. See, this is this is the thing about Rotary. In this room, we have members of our club. We have members from literally across the world. We have people here who are doing amazing things in our community and in other communities around the world as well. We're here in fellowship. It's just, this is what Rotary is. This is, I mean, for me, this is like one of the most exciting times of the week, every week. I get to come and hang out with you all. So I really appreciate that you are here. And um, yes, let's continue with that. Next, it's the next week, right? So 17th. I don't even know if today's Tuesday, actually. I don't even know what the date is. School started with me, and so my brain has um, dissipated. So next week, I believe, um, is our district governor visit on September 17th. So Rachel, will you come in to speak to us? And so if you haven't yet registered for that, please do so. Um, registrations for lunches are always due uh, Friday morning. So do try to get that in because we have to give the, the count to the ULC. So Rachel will be here on September 17th. On September 24th is one of our club assemblies. So at one of these meetings, you'll get to hear about all of the different things that the different committees are doing. So we heard a little bit today, but um, at, a, at a meeting like the club assembly, um, you'll hear from our community service committee, the international service committee, uh, maybe some things from job one. So it'll really be a good way to sort of catch up to everything that's going on behind the scenes for our club. On Tuesday, October 1st, the location is still to be determined. It won't be here. Usually our after hour Tuesday meetings are off site. So we don't have a, a site yet, but Ina Pinkney, will be our presenter for that particular um, meeting. So she is a chef, she's a businesswoman, um, and she is a survivor of polio. So for those in the room who may not know, one of the major projects of Rotary is eradicating polio. And so each year um, we have her speak um, just to keep us abreast of, of what's going on um, in the world of polio. Um, on the first Mondays of each month, we have a fellowship meeting called Rotary Means Business. This is in downtown Chicago at, at Cafe Chow, right, Alita? Is that always true? Yes, so Cafe Chow, there's no cost to attend, and this is a, a nice networking opportunity. So that is the first Monday of each month. I believe it starts at 5.30, or check-ins at 5.30, it starts at 6.00. Um, at Cafe Chow. All of these events that I've been mentioning, you can find on our calendar. So I know that we go through things kind of quickly, um, but you do get emails about them. It's in the gyrator, and of course, it is on our calendar. 
And each Friday, we have our Rotary Roundtable. This is a networking and fellowship uh, opportunity. It's informal, there's no speaker. Um, Ted and uh, Richard, uh, who are both here today, I think I saw, right? Ted and Richard are both here today. So they are sort of our ambassadors for our club and they welcome any guests to come to their Friday Roundtable at noon. They meet on the fourth floor here. So all of the projects that we do in here are funded through the foundation and we can't make our foundation work if we don't have any money. So we do accept all kinds of donations. It doesn't have to be a thousand dollars, but that would be great. Uh, $5 is also fine, um, but just understand that all the projects that we do in here through the International Service Committee or the Community Service Committee or Job One, they are all um, funded through the foundation. And so we will accept all sorts of donations. You can go online to do that. So I don't think I have any other announcements. So with that, let's rise and we will go through the four-way test. So if you're unfamiliar with our four-way test, you can see it here on the screen, or we've got banners there as well. This is the four-way test of the things we think, say, or do. Number one, is it the truth? Number two, is it fair to all concerned? Number three, will it build goodwill and better friendships? Number four, will it be beneficial to all concerned? And then our number five is, will it be fun? So with that, I want to thank you for being here. You've got all of our social media links up here. That concludes for today. I really appreciate you being here.